Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee. Today's video is going to be 10 skincare tips. I am 25 years old. I have dermographism. I have very sensitive skin basically. I have rosacea. My skin is more on the oily type. I am not wearing any foundation or anything right now. The only thing I'm wearing are eyebrows, some mascara, some shimmer on my eyes, and some lip gloss. That's all I'm wearing so that's just kind of like a quick rundown of who I am. This is going to be my skincare tips for someone who has very sensitive skin like myself. This is what works for me and I hope that will help you in some way. So I'm going to dive right into it. Number one is to work inside out, not outside in. Creams and oils and all this other stuff is really good for your skin and I think it's really important to find the right ones for you. But I think skincare comes from within. If you're not taking care of your body internally, it's going to show on the outside. When you have skincare problems, it's like your body trying to detoxify whatever's going wrong. You could have like food allergies. You could be not feeding your body correctly. You want to make sure that you're getting all of your essential vitamins. I actually have a discount code for Ritual. I'm just throwing that out there if you guys want. That's like a really good source vitamin. Another thing that I use is Vega One, the all-in-one chocolate protein shake that has a ton of different nutrients in there that I've been using for probably three to four years now and I've never really had an issue with my skin and I feel like that's like a huge part of it because it has so much like good in it. I'll link all of the stuff down below as well if you guys are interested. Um, and then you want to always make sure you're getting in your greens because I feel like greens are really healthy for you in terms of getting your vitamins and nutrients. Spinach is a big one for me. I notice like when I eat a lot of spinach, my skin is just like glowing, I think because of the iron in there. Another thing for healthy clear skin is good essential fats. Fats are so healthy for you. They are oil-based, so I feel like it makes your skin just like glow and very plump and healthy looking. If you're not getting healthy fats, your skin will definitely suffer. So healthy fats to me include like avocados, fatty fish. Another thing is antioxidants. So antioxidants are really, really important in terms of having healthy skin while you're aging. It helps decrease wrinkles and make your skin again just have like a glow and like a radiant shine to it so a good way to get antioxidants is through berries that's like a really easy and yummy way to get them in also lots of water hydrate 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 everyone says this but everyone says it because it's true when you don't drink water your skin gets dehydrated and it becomes very thin and bumpy and red and just not healthy like you're literally dehydrating yourself and that includes limiting your alcohol intake I find when I am drinking more my skin will get again very thin and dehydrated and not as plump and healthy looking and then I also get more like red tones because I do have rosacea so like my redness will kind of flare up. You want to make sure that you're putting in quality nutrients into your body. If you're investing in a product, you're also investing in your health. So when you are, you know, eating especially animal products, you want to make sure that you're buying organic, um, sustainably sourced products that doesn't have a lot of the chemicals and, you know, antibiotics that they put in the animals who aren't raised that way. That affects your skin. Your fruits and vegetables, you want to make sure that you're buying as organic as possible. I know that organic can be a little bit more expensive. So what my rule is is that if I eat the outside of the fruit or vegetable I buy it organic. So for example apples berries But if I don't eat the outside like oranges or bananas or avocados I don't necessarily feel the need to buy organic You want to make sure that like your eggs your dairy are from pasture raised sources any meat that you eat You want to make sure that it's again pasture raised and fed like a healthy diet and then like fish for example You want to always make sure that you you're getting wild caught, not farm raised. That's gonna be the difference of quality over quantity. The second tip that I have is to keep it simple. A lot of the times when we break out, we freak out and we feel like it's something to do with our skincare or our diet and we switch everything up pretty much overnight because we're sitting there going crazy about it. We do all this research and we're like, oh my God, we're doing everything wrong. And then you switch it up like crazy. Keep in mind when you switch things up, your body will react because you're doing something different. So any extractions that you have, like that come out like pimples that's your body literally detoxifying itself so pimples aren't necessarily a bad thing if they're happening especially after you change any product like a makeup product or a skincare product that's just your body kind of like getting rid of the toxins and stuff. So a lot of people, when they get facials, for example, like they'll break out the next week or something because they're detoxifying and they're extracting all of those like toxins from your body. People freak out and then they like change up their routine or try a new product and they break out and they think, oh my God, this is making me break out. And then they switch again and then they break out more and then they switch again and they break out more and then they go crazy and stress themselves out and just create an ongoing problem. When I use my makeup, I tend to stick to the makeup products that I use. I don't change out my foundations ever. I use the same bronzer, I use the same blush, I use the same highlighter, same concealer. I don't switch up my routine very often. And if I ever do, yes, I'll probably break out a little bit. 
Um, but again, let your body get used to it. Don't like go crazy and start changing it. The more you change things up, the more your body is gonna like try to get used to the products and just like, it's just not gonna be good. You wanna keep it simple, like just have a cleanser, an exfoliant, a moisturizer. If you do a ton of crazy stuff because you're reading about all this stuff online, you're gonna put your skin in overdrive. <laughs> you also wanna make sure that these skincare products are dye and fragrance free. I've learned that from Mistake. The best products out there that I've noticed is CeraVe and Cetaphil. That's what I've learned in like the skincare world is like those are really good, inexpensive, uh, clean, clean, clean products. Some makeup products also that I use that help give the appearance of like clear, very plump skin is the Blur Stick by Milk. That is just like a stick that you put on your face and it kind of just primes and gets rid of like any excess pores showing. So it makes your skin look really smooth and plump without looking greasy. If you ever have done like Facetune or anything like that and you do like a little blur effect to get rid of any extremities or anything like that, that's what the blur stick does. It kind of just like evens the skin tone and makes your skin look like one fresh blur. <laughs> Another one is a highlighter that I use. It's a shimmer. It makes your skin look so glowy. I put a little bit underneath my eye brows on my eyelids and then on my cheeks nose and upper lip and that'll just give you like a very dewy glowy look again without looking super greasy and it's a cream that you just rub on your finger so it's so simple to put on and it just kind of like glides into your skin it's really nice in terms of lips I've been using this lip plumper by Nugen and this stuff makes my lips so plump and healthy looking it also stays on so long like so long I can literally keep this lip gloss on for hours it's very thick though so if you're not into thick lip gloss probably not for you but it just gives me a very glowy look and then as for like underneath my eye I use the Glossier uh, bubble wrap eye plumper and I'll just put it underneath my eye and it'll again moisturize and just make my skin look super glowy the next tip that I have is to leave your skin alone stop rubbing it like crazy and moving it around like crazy try your best not to touch your face because we have like dirt and stuff on our fingers be gentle with your skin if you do have a pimple don't pop it leave it alone even if it's like white on the tip i realized like if you just leave it alone for a day and just suck it up don't put makeup on it just if you can, if you're not going anywhere, just don't put anything on it. It'll go away in like two to three days. I literally have one on my neck right now and I'm just like not touching it. Um, I find when I do touch it, I get more pimples in that area and or I'll also get scarring on top of it. So it's just not a good thing. So just don't touch it, leave it alone. The fourth tip that I have is to reduce your stress. A lot of the times when we're stressed out, we get more acne. Reduce your stress intake by, you know, working on your wellness. Try not to like go extreme with it. A lot of times, especially when people are dealing with acne, I see that they are so focused on it and there's always thinking about it, always talking about it, which creates more stress and I feel like you get like stress acne from that. So if you are dealing with breakouts and stuff, try your best to kind of just leave it alone and don't obsess over it because the more you obsess over it, the more you're stressing yourself again internally, which is gonna again affect your body externally. For example, like you don't have to have like a perfect skincare routine. You know, if you slip up and sleep with your makeup on one day, just like be like, okay, I slept with my makeup, I won't do it again. Like you don't have to sit there and harp over it and like freak out because you have one pimple or you're dealing with acne, try your best to like focus on other things. I know that can be really hard obviously, but just try. There's actually like a diagram that tells you too like the types of acne on your face and like what that means. There's like different types of acne, but then there's also like locations on your face of where you get them and like what that means. It all affects your body. So try your best to kind of just not stress about life. <laughs> Such an easy thing to say, but like harder to do, you know? The fifth one is to wash your sheets as often as possible. I say this because a lot of the times when we sleep on our beds, we get a lot of grooves grease and oils and dirt that's on our face from the day before which seeps through to our pillows and if you're not washing your sheets frequently you're gonna keep putting that all over your face and it's gonna like get the dirt and stuff all in your face and your pores which is not healthy so um, I wash mine probably once a week or once every two weeks. The sixth thing is to moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. This one's hydrating your skin from the outside in. So when you drink a lot of water and you're drinking like good quality water, like I drink Essentia, again, it's super expensive, but it's worth it. Sometimes I'll buy Essentia, then I'll switch over to like the cheap 99 cent spring water from my store. But there's a pH level in your water. The higher the pH level, the less acidic it is to your body and the more alkalizing it is for your body. And you get a lot of electrolytes in, which is super healthy for your skin, but off topic. If you wanna work on hydrating your skin from the outside in, you wanna 
to make sure that you're moisturizing your skin because again a lot of the times when we go through our day when we put on makeup we're walking around outside the pollution the sun damage and all that stuff our skin gets very dehydrated and very dull and not healthy the texture is off and the more that you moisturize the more that your skin like replenishes its vitamins and nutrients from the outside the number one moisturizing cream that I use that I've noticed a huge drastic change in my skin is the CeraVe moisturizing cream this stuff is so lathering like you feel like you're literally just like plumping your skin as you put it on but it doesn't give you that greasy look which is so rare the ingredients are extra clean my favorite product i've ever ever found it's so inexpensive too and you get like this big tube the seventh thing that i have is protect your skin from the sun this is something that i used to do when i was younger and once you do it you can't reverse it unfortunately i used to sit there and just bask in the sun when i was a teenager because i thought being tan was cool but i just totally messed up my skin i had like sun damage all here on my nose it makes your skin so bad like you get sunspots you can get you know veins here I have some veins here on my nose and again it makes the texture so bad and it's not as young looking skin the more that you put yourself in the sun the more you age and the quicker that you age so this is super super important I use the Glossier daily sunscreen I'm from Florida like I I know sun and I've been in the sun so just trust me on this sunscreen is very greasy it's very thick it often smells like sunscreen I hate sunscreen but this one is really nice because it goes underneath your makeup and it's made for everyday use so it's not like this thick lathered like oily greasy texture you can't even tell that you're even wearing sunscreen the eighth thing that I have is laser treatments so I with my sun damage I had a lot of sun damage here and up on my forehead area and this is more for cosmetic looks I don't think it does anything to the actual damage of your skin. I went to a dermatologist and she had recommended um, IPL treatment. Obviously you want to talk to like multiple doctors, make sure that this is the right treatment for you. But for me, the sun damage that I had, the best option was the IPL treatment. And my skin was so smooth after my redness went down, the texture of my skin improved, and I no longer have these like sun spots on my face. The ninth tip that I have is to do your own research. I realized that when I go to dermatologists who have a specific brand or a specific skin skincare line they will only sell those products now obviously you're going to trust a dermatologist more because they are doctors like they study this and I'm sure if it's their own skincare line they've put a lot of research and thought into that product and they're probably very passionate about it but everybody's skin is very different so what works for you might not work for others and there's a difference between certain dermatologists who just want to sell their product I've noted the more different types of dermatologists that I went to the more I could like narrow down my own idea of what I want to do with my skin and I can see a little bit of what everyone is telling me. A very good YouTuber that I recommend if you're looking for skincare stuff, he is amazing. Like all his videos, like he literally studies the ingredients is Hiram. And all his products that he mentions are very affordable products and they're very clean. He's not trying to sell it. A lot of the stuff that I've watched is not sponsored and I just, I trust it more. So be careful like where you're getting your research from. Make sure that you go to a doctor. Make sure that you're, you know, taking in a little bit of what everyone's saying. Do your own research and gather your thoughts onto what you think works for you and then go from there just from personal experience I've done some stuff where I like bought products or thought products were okay when really it was just a high priced item and that someone got a commission off of and the 10th and final thing again you want to talk to your doctor about this but I just want to tell you guys that I am on birth control I've been on birth control for a while now and I'm on this one I don't know like the technicalities of it but I know that birth control can really help with your skincare I'm not saying to go get on birth control but if you are having like problems with your skin maybe you can talk to your doctor about it, it and help with like your hormone levels and again I'm not trying to push that on anybody just if you are having more of a problem with it Maybe ask your doctor if that can help you. Yeah, those are my 10 tips. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys all in a future video. Bye, guys. She's calling me.